Hey everybody, Danny Mudd here. Thanks for joining us. Have you ever found that round the greens, you're struggling to get that consistency of strike? You're catching the leading edge of the club, so you're thinning it over the back of the green, or you're not striking the ball at all. You're striking the ground, then the ball, and you're leaving it in front of your face. It leads a lot of my clients who come to see me with chipping problems, with lots of anxiety, stress, and frustration around the greens, which makes them so nervous, and they're almost spoiling a lot of potentially really, really good rounds. Well, the solution is a lot simpler than you may seem. You may have tried a lot of things, but I've got something that's working so, so well for many of my clients. It's not, it's not difficult to practice, very, very straightforward. It involves a few simple changes you need to make in the way you strike through the shot. I'm gonna share with you exactly what those are in this week's training. Before I do, if you are new to the channel and this is one of your first videos, consider subscribing. I release content like this every single week to try my best to try and help you improve your game. So, what are we finding when people are coming to chip? I think there's like the old and the new. People have got this kind of, the, the old way of doing it and now there's a new way. The old way was simple. Move the ball back in your stance, put your hands forward, put your weight forward, and that should be enough to fix your chipping problems. The reality is this, if you've tried this, it hasn't worked, does it? Not on a regular basis. And one of the main reasons for this is when you put lots of shaft lean in, you, sh you basically expose the leading edge of the golf club. When that comes in this here, this is like a sharp butter knife, it literally starts to cut down into the ground. If you don't catch that ball first, it's not gonna be a good strike. Now, can you chip well with it? Of course you can, but the problem is you just have to catch the ball first every time because if you don't, unfortunately, the leading edge is gonna dig in and you're gonna catch it fat. Now, the other factor of the matter is, is also this. One of the problems when you had the leading edge um, or angle like this is that when you come into impact and the ball's back and your hands are here, your hands now are so far ahead of the ball, the brain doesn't like that very much. But I've seen, I noticed with a lot of players, so it suddenly goes, hang on a second, I should have, my hands should have hit the ball. It hasn't. So there becomes this violent flash of the hands right at the last minute. We do not want that to happen. So, old way, works sometimes, not consistent. Let me show you the new way. The new way, believe it or not, you don't have to strike the uh, ball first at all. You can actually look at actually striking the ground behind the golf ball. In order to do that, you basically use I know some confusing faces. I had a few clients of mine very confused this. Strike the ground behind the golf ball. Sure, that's going to be fat. Um, absolutely not. So when you um, look at golf club here, if you can get the flat bit of the club, in a sense, on the ground, then basically what happens is, is as long, when you come into impact, the flat bit glides along the ground. So what, let me show you here. So what's happening here is when we come into impact, the club itself, starts to glide through the surface. It's not digging now, right? Because the bottom is blunt. And what happens therefore, is that when we actually make a strike, we basically glide it and it, it just pops up. And, it, and the margin of error is massive. So in theory, what I'm doing is that I'm increasing my likelihood that I don't have to be perfect. You know, I can actually strike um, a centimeter, an inch behind the ball, as long as a club is gliding through, as long as this club is actually, in a sense, gliding, I'm using the bounce, I'm not gonna fat it. Yeah, and as you can see, that's not the best chip in the world, but it's just moved forward and it's, and it's, it's a perfectly good strike. The next thing we wanna do is, once you've got the sensation there, is this. You wanna start to pay attention to how you do it. So, before we get into getting into strike, let me just cover some basics in terms of setup, make sure you're, you're in, in the right setup initially. So. We're gonna use the bounce. How do we, in a sense then, if we, if we need to use this, how do we set up to, to use it? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna not move the ball back in our stance to start it with. Let's push the ball middle or even forward for a second, right? But let's start, let's start middle. We're not gonna have the shaft lean. We're gonna have the shaft facing you nice and straight, right? So we're not having this motion at all. From there, what we're gonna do, let our arms hang, and we're not gonna push our weight forward at all. Because when you push your weight forward, your sternum now does this. And when you're back here, watch this. Now you're in a position to kind of chase. If, you, if any of you guys out there often find that your knees are going when you're chipping or you're kind of firing the hands, one of the problems is that ultimately from here, you, you're firing it because your body's back, your torso's back, and you're having to reach it. 
So what you've got to do instead is we've got to, in a sense, get the sensation here that we're not pushing our weight forward. What we're doing is we're simply going to kind of move the shoulders a bit more level. We're going to move more here. So when we set up the sternum now, look, the sternum is going to set basically here. It's basically just, I would say, almost just behind the ball. I would say, I, don't, I, like, I like to have it about here. I don't want the head just messing over straight over the top, but just over, just behind the golf ball is absolutely fine. And now the shoulders are level get here you're going to be in this position right so let's have a look at this in action so i'll get myself set arms are hanging down nice and naturally here i've got quite a narrow stance the other thing i'm doing here is this i you know i'm chipping right so and i'm trying to move something forward i don't like to see players with in a sense the toes pointing directly this way i think you know if you were if you were in a sense pushing something forward you'd be slightly turned inwards so i like to see the sensation that my, my lead foot here is kind of open to my target. It's giving me some room to come through. I get my arms set here. Now that's the setup done. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the distinction we mentioned earlier. We're gonna try to now listen for the sound of the bounce. Now my first practice swing there created a small, tiny little divot. That means that I've come, the leading edge has come down too steeply. What I'm gonna do now is practice gliding the club through the ball. I'm looking at the club face, making sure it's coming through square as I'm doing this, and I'm gliding it through. Now, when you're starting this, you might have to start off by doing it very slowly. So this might not reach the hole, but I'm gonna do it really, really slowly to start with. Because if you're new to this, distance control, initially just put it aside, you've gotta do it so slowly that you can feel what's going on. So watch this. Again, I'm not gonna try and reach the hole on this one. I'm gonna do it really slowly just see if I can get the bounce of that club working. Now watch this. That there is a downward hit. We don't want downward hit. That's gonna cause the fat, right? So that's not gliding. This is the leading edge digging in. We don't want any of that either. We're gonna practice moving the club in square and getting the bottom of that club gliding through the impact area, okay? Now this is a nine iron I'm using here, which is why it's kind of releasing out. You can do this with any club in the bag, but just for now, just using a 9 because there's nothing to go over, and I'm allowing the club just to glide through the impact area. And, the, and if you look at the surface here, there's absolutely, apart from the uh, demonstrations of me coming down, there's no, in a sense, um, damage to that at all. Uh, the club and the, the bottom edge there is just gliding through. So, my third and final point with the chipping is to kind of get a sense of, so we've, we said, look, here's how you set up. Here's the sensation of uh, what you need to do with a strike. But again, how does the body work? Well, this is the best way to kind of feel how the body works. For me, it's just like throwing, okay, a gentle throw. So grab a golf club in your trail hand or a right hand if you're a right-handed golfer. Grab it there. Feel the way this club face is square. Stick it under um, your lead arm or left arm for right-handed golfers. And what I'm going to do here is I'm simply just going to imagine I'm moving the face through to the target. Have a look from here, look. There's the ball. I'm gonna sensation of moving that face to the target. It's a great way to uh, feel how the body works when we're chipping. Simple, simple exercise, but great way to feel how it works. Most people, you know, that's just weird, but the people, that's how people chip. This is why they get their knees going and the hands fleshing and getting that yip. This is how the body works, very subtly. Have a look at this in action here, so you can feel that motion there. Then again, do it very slowly, really um, in a sense when you're learning this, do it so slowly to start off with, so that you can feel it. Too many players without realizing, they try and do normal chip shots, and it's too difficult. Now, be, be easy on yourself. Take some time, try and get that out. You see how my body's working there, look. Yeah, just a small little movement there. Just moving onto green. Again, paying attention to the strike and the bounce, not a problem there. Now, why did my ball to go to the right there? Really simple. I got a bit that way on it. Okay, so let's do that again. Back here, around, nice and simple, okay. Okay, not too bad. Okay, so in summary there, what have we done with the chipping? We said, look, there are two or three uh, things you need to work on. Remember, the old method is very, very simple, but doesn't work, right? Not on a consistent basis. Old method is, is this. 
ball back, hands forward, weight forward, leads to inconsistency. Right? We tried it for many years, didn't work, let's move to something new. Modern, the best players in the world are using this. Seve really started it. He was the first person really I, I saw using the ground behind the golf ball to, to play. And we didn't realize, we didn't copy him. So let's start to copy a master, all right? And now let's do what most of the other players are doing. What they're doing, they're using the flat bit of the golf club, the bounce, but we need to know how to use that bounce. First thing is, is don't get the ball back initially. You can do that eventually, but just for now, get the ball middle of your stance. Club level. Leading foot outwards a little bit, okay? From there. Then, what we then say, once you've got the setup, oh, one more thing. Let, level the shoulders up. Don't push your weight forward, create this angle. Keep everything much more level, right? Your weight will automatically be there anyway, but level these off. Then, when you're playing, start to just do it very slowly and just practice the club pace. Coming in square and gliding through the surface. It's just gliding through. When you hit a ground, don't worry. That's absolutely normal. It's just, you, you know, it's just evidence that, oh, okay, I've just come down a little bit on the ball with the leading edge. Keep gliding through, a few shots like that, and then hit a, few, uh, hit a few balls, right? Once you've done that, then maybe just kind of grab a club like this and then get the feel of them full motion. This is how the body works, yeah? So you've got now the feeling of coming through the shot and the gliding of the ground. Marry those two things together and you'll start to get the strike. Once you get consistency of strike, at that point, you can start worrying about where, you, where, it, where it goes near the hole and start working on distance control. But not until you start to get the consistency of strike first. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing and pressing the bell so I can see you next week where I can hopefully help your game. Of course, if you've got any comments, don't hesitate, leave them in the comments box below. I answer them every single day. So if you've got any questions on the short game, ping them in there. I'll, I will get back to you. But until next week, have a great golfing week.